Hi there, so last week we were working on our initial ideas. and Hopefully you've come up with three different ideas like we have here, and they should be annotated. What you should now be doing is we're gonna be choosing our favorite idea, and we're gonna go on to develop uh, development models. So rather than develop the ideas on paper, which you could do, you could sketch them, um, we're gonna to move to modeling, um, because it allows a lot of freedom, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So our task for this week is to develop three models um, to explore different aesthetic options for your bud bands there. Why do we make models? To generate, explore ideas, test and refine, resolve issues and communicate design proposals. So generate, explore ideas, models are great for this. You can quickly change your own components um, of the model to see how it affects the aesthetics, maybe how it affects the function there. It's really easy to play around with. It's a lot quicker than sketching because you can quickly just flip something around and see how it changes the design. I'll talk about that a little bit more when I show you the models I've made this week. Test and refine. You can test the functionality. We won't be doing that so much there, but you can, um, if you want to test the function, you might have, if you had a, a test tube, you can test where it went position wise in the cardboard. Um, and you could look at that there. Would there be enough space to fit something else as well if you made a full size model? And that goes again for resolving issues. Models can also be really useful for communicating our design. And um, sometimes people find it hard to understand a 2D sketch. And so by using a 3D model, it helps them understand how it all fits together. It's cheap and it's less expensive using models there as well. If we went into the workshop, and if we could, and we made all these models, all this development of models, we would be using a lot of materials. And um, at the moment, and um, we can use card, cardboard, and some of this can be scrap. So the cardboard can come from just a cardboard box, the card, the colorful card, just from cereal packages around your house. And I'll talk, show you what I've done with my models. Uh, allows you to evaluate designs as well. So size, aesthetics, ergonomics. Um, so we're mainly using these for exploring different aesthetic options for your bud vans there. Um, but if you'd made it to scale, you can evaluate the size, and also ergonomics as well, easily then. A few different model types just want to highlight here. So we've got sketch models. And so sketch models are just rough models, just kind of quickly done, and they can be used for all exploring different, maybe a little mechanism, and um, get used to explore the design or something. And then just rather than sketching, if you can go sketching out a quick idea. So we could have done our initial ideas as sketch models, and that would have been perfectly fine. Even these models, these are just kind of quick models that we're doing. Next up, we've got block models. My block models on non-working versions of product typically made in clay or styrofoam. So sometimes you, if you've ever seen, sometimes they do concept cars, they actually just mold the concept car out of clay. And they might do that just to really just show the aesthetics there. Um, finally, we've got scale models there. So again, with concept cars, they often might make a scale model first to do aerodynamic tests, or not concept cars, but cars in general. Might do a scale model down, aerodynamic testing on it there. Um, and that just means it's, it's a lot smaller. You can set, uh, test different uh, criteria without producing a large model. And then finally, CAD uh, computer generated models there. You can do a whole variety of different simulation work on the computer there. Um, obviously, you can use it just for reviewing the aesthetics, but you can also do things like finite element analysis where you can be looking at stresses and strains on the model if, you, if it's got a lot of forces involved in it. And that's just that's just a real small part I'm covering there. There's a wide variety of computer uh, simulation that you can do on computer generated models. Our learning intentions for this task is to use tools and equipment to manufacture sketch models slash products. Use sketch modeling techniques to evaluate designs and concepts and design proposals. Select tools, equipment to mark out, cut, shape, form, and finish models, products independently. Success so criteria here. So we're aiming to kind of work within level four or produce three models to explore variations of each of your chosen design. So we're taking one design from last week and we're developing our design off that there. Each model is be photographed, uploaded to your OneNote where you then will need to annotate it. We want to 
suggest improvements, we want to maybe reject ideas, we're going to evaluate that against the design specifications. So whatever you have specified, you can review that, say if your model does, if it doesn't meet it there. Remember, we've got examples of some annotations within this presentation, which is also available to, for you to look through at your own pace. Um, the model should be in proportion. Um, so if we're kind of scaling it all down, so don't then maybe evaluate against the size of a tea light. I think, right, if we made this a little bit bigger, it would fit a tea light, for example, or fit the keys. So if you make it, for example, the same size as roughly you've been sketching, just because that's what the materials you've got, that is absolutely fine. But just bear that in mind, okay? It's really aesthetics we're looking at. We're not looking at you to test hanging keys on the models you make at the moment. And um, finally, we want clear notes and annotations, communicating design, justify choices with reference to your specification. So really at the end is we have one model that we want to be able to take forward into a kind of final design. And we want to be able to understand based on your annotations kind of why you've chosen that model there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a model I've made. I'm going to talk about the modeling techniques that we want to be using and you'll then upload that into OneNote there. And I will also show you an example of an annotated one in OneNote. So we're going to have a look at um, our sketch modeling here to develop our ideas. So last week I had come up with a couple of different ideas. Um, I'm going to take this one here. So fairly straightforward. I had that all annotated and that was complete and ready to go. And so far I've done one development model off that there. So. But notice it's not exactly the same. We're not just taking a previous idea and modeling that there. Though, if you want to as a start, that is absolutely fine. Um, because then you can gradually move those elements around of that model. Um, I've played around with this model here. I've moved that kind of piece at the back there to the front because it was going to affect the mounting. I kind of realized that there. One thing I also realized on my model was I had my holder for my test tube at the right hand side there. And actually, I had my key holder straight below that. So that wasn't going to work. So that was a wee idea. I was modeling that there. It wasn't obvious from the two views I'd drawn here. So that was a nice wee kind of thing to pick up on the model there. And so I moved that across the other side there. I also kind of changed the aesthetics. I wanted a bit more uh, symmetric at the bottom there as well. What you'll need for this task is I've used just cardboard. Um, from a cereal box, it can be coloured on one side, that's absolutely fine. So that's what I recommend, cardboard, or if you don't have cardboard, card as well for your modelling there. Um, it's just a little bit more flimsy, but that works really well for the wood part of the model. For the colourful parts, I've that's part of a Rice Krispies box, uh, some other packaging, some ice lollies, been enjoying, enjoying those in the hot weather there. And don't worry too much, if it's got detail on it there of other things, don't worry too much. If you if that's the kind of colour that you're looking for, um, that's absolutely fine. And you can see other. I've got a nice dark blue there. I've got some dark green. I've just just gone round, looked in the kind of paper recycling, seen what I've had there. Looked to kind of what cereal boxes I might get away to check. Maybe check with your parents or guardians if you are going to cut up any boxes that they're okay with you doing that there first. Um, don't blame it on me. So that is kind of. What you'll need, some card, you don't need that much. If you've just got maybe one or two colors, you can't get the exact color you want, don't worry. You can always annotate it to say, but you may discover that you actually prefer that color. Um, so have a think about that there. You're gonna need some scissors, and also a little bit of blue tack is what I've used as well. Um, and the blue tack for, if we look at this model here, I've got the blue tack in here and here. I've made a hole for the test tube. Don't worry about making a hole in the car, but it's quite tricky. Um, and I've also stuck these on with blue tack. And the great thing about blue tack is, I go actually, do you know what? That's my first idea. Take a picture of that idea there. What I recommend is when you're taking a picture, grab a bit of white paper, take your picture off the model like so. Maybe a couple of different angles so you can really appreciate it there, and then you can move on. If you're happy with that model there, you can, if you don't want, if you want to kind of develop some of the shapes you've got in this here, is you can actually use the same model. You can, um, the same parts of the model. So I could start taking this apart here. I could flip that round, take that off there, take the blue tack off that there. And so I've gone from that symmetrical bottom 
And you don't have to like every change you make, okay? The thing about sketch modeling is it's about making a change and we can review it. We can add that detail in. I'm going to add that there. I've just lost my blue tack here in a second, so I've got a wee bit of blue tack on the back of this here. Doesn't need to be a lot. You don't want me hanging it off the wall. So I've already cut, I cut that earlier. So it's another bit of acrylic there. Do I want to add this back in or not? You can kind of evaluate it. No, nope, don't like that there. So I might just leave that there. Potentially, actually. Might have that coming aside there. And where we are. So that there, I've got my test tube holder on that side there. I'm just going to stick that back on. And this here is actually just rolled up paper because um, I wanted to represent some acrylic rod. So say you wanted to represent maybe a little bit of dial, which is kind of those little wooden cylinders that we, that you, I think you might have used in second year. Oops, that's come undone there. Um, roll that up nice and tight. I should add, here's one I made earlier, like Blue Peter style. Um, so that's where my keys would go in there. Move that down to the bottom a little bit. And that could be my next idea. And don't worry about too much about the blue tack you can see, because we know it's a sketch model, we know it's not meant to be exact, when we're looking at the overall shapes and functions of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a picture of this here. I've got a picture of my other one there, and I'll show you what kind of annotation we're looking for. Again, take a picture of it against the white background. I've taken pictures of my ideas and I've attached them to my OneNote just using my phone. What I've done with the first idea actually, and it may work quite well for those who are working just on a mobile device, is I have placed my design on a sheet of paper and I've actually annotated it before I've taken my picture. And so I've got things like, I like how the circles are concentric over the left hand side here. And the acrylic mount on the front makes it easier to mount because one of the design specifications is it's easy to wall mount. I've moved the key hook so it doesn't hit the test tube, where the test tube will be down in that position there. And the bottom of the bud vase is now symmetric, which is more visually appealing. Um, so that's obviously my opinion on that there, but you're allowed to have that there. You're the designer. So that might be one good way of doing it. And the more annotation, the better when it comes to design. If you look for your whole specification, you have a point for everyone, that's great. If you don't have that, that's fine. Um, and as I said, you may want two images to design there. You can't see the shelf all about that well in that image there. Um, so that's, if you have the two images, that'd be great, especially if you've got some nice detail on the shelf there. Um, next up here, I've got a lower design. Now I've just taken a picture of this here, so it's my second design here. And I've annotated this on OneNote itself. Um, so I've got the orange adds nicely to design. Uh, actually, I should say, as it's so bright there, but I'm in the pen mode here. So I'll just change that quickly. Um, so what I can do is I can go up here, select the black pen, select the drawing, and for example, down the bottom here, I can add an arrow, go back into my text, and I can start typing. Um, so I would say that's not as not as aesthetically pleasing. Um, so I'll put the asymmetry. And, oops, not too great my spelling there. It's not as aesthetically pleasing. So yeah, not as symmetric, uh, aesthetic pleasing as the symmetric bottom, and you can just resize that so it fits a little bit nicer. So that's a really e uh, easy way of um, annotating your design there as well. So there are your two options. Option one, annotated on a sheet of paper, placed behind your design there. That could be a couple of sheets of paper, whatever suits. And option two there, um, you can annotate it on the one note itself. Do you remember we're looking for free options and uh, free designs. They can use all the same components rearranged. Have a look at the example there as well. Um, but we really want them to kind of refer your annotation to refer to your specification, so that when we come to develop this, um, when we come to use this idea um, and make a final idea, that it will meet your specification there.